Ich habe eine Frage für euch. Habt ihr Probleme mit englischen Präpositionen? Kein Problem. In this video I will explain to you a very simple way to remember when you use in, on and at. And watch the video to the end and I will also tell you a really great website that you can use to find a lot of really cool English language learning material. So when do we use in, on, at to talk about time and to talk about location? Well, the rule, the simple rule that you can remember is, think about it like this, in general, more specific and very specific, or bigger, smaller, smallest. So for example, when you're talking about time, when you're talking about centuries, decades, years, months, weeks, you would use in. So I'll write it here. So you would say, for example, in the 18th century, or in the 19th century, in the 20th century, or in the 80s. When were you born? Were you born in the 70s? Were you born in the 80s? Were you born in the 90s? So also for decades, for a year, I started this job in 2005, or I left school in 2008, or in 1998, I was born in what year? So, in is also for years, and it's also for months. We have a lot of orders in January, and we have less orders in June. So for all of those things, when you're talking about um, bigger time phrases or bigger spaces of time, then you say in. If you think about location, also this idea of in a bigger place, for example a country or a city or a town, then you would use in or in a neighborhood. So in a country or a city or a neighborhood. So I could say to you, you know, where do you live in Austria? Or where do you live in Germany? Do you live in Berlin or in Munich? Um, in what neighborhood? Do you live in Zehlendorf or do you live in Kreuzberg? Or do you live in Mitte or Prenzlauberg? Where do you live? In what neighborhood? In what city? Again, this idea that it's in a bigger place, we use in. Moving on to this one, when it's, when it's more specific or when it's smaller, we say on. So for example, here with the time, we would say on what days or on the weekend. So I have English class on Monday or we always have the sales meeting on Tuesday. So on for a smaller time, space of time, on what day? Or you could say on the weekend. I always relax on the weekend or I don't work on the weekend. Again, a smaller space of time. The same for this side, when you're talking about location, we would say on what street or avenue. You can also say on the corner of. So, for example, on a street. Um, in London you could go shopping, many tourists go shopping on Oxford Street. Or in New York, many people go shopping on Fifth Avenue. So on with the street and on with Avenue. And also you can say the corner of. So let's meet on the corner of Until and Linden and Friedrichstrasse. So on the corner of and then two streets. Finally, when you're talking about very specific times or very specific locations, then you can use at. 
So at, for example, and the time. So you'd say at four o'clock or at 5.30, let's meet at 6.30, um, and then we can go to the cinema at eight. So at with the time, and at also for a specific address or location. So an example of this would be um, the Prime Minister lives at 10 Downing Street or let's meet at the television tower or at the exit of the train station. Again, you could say let's meet in, in Mitte um, on the corner of two streets but then a specific location at, at the television tower or at the exit of the train station or the metro station. So I think if you just remember this triangle here with in, on, at for time and location, that will help you remember these. The website that I was telling you about, that, that I wanted to tell you about, that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is called Real Life English. So if you just Google Real Life English, or reallifeglobal.com that's where I found this here and they have lots of very nice videos and podcasts and other cool stuff and I definitely recommend that if you like this video please hit the like button share it with your friends and I will see you soon if you want to see more video tips like this just click on these videos here here are some examples before I tell you the explanation. Have a look at them and see can you tell me the differences in the meaning of these words. So, mayor or mayor. So here we have six business English abbreviations, quite typical ones. Which of those do you understand? And in these five sentences you have one mistake in every sentence.